why we call it justice. Because it's just us. The world needs the X-Men. Ever since the first Avengers movie in 2012, Eager comic fans have been pleading that some type of deal be worked out between Fox and Marvel so that Earth's Mightiest Heroes and the Children of the Atom could team up for one big adventure on the silver screen. After a couple years, their dreams were crushed, as both companies loudly said that it would never happen. A similar situation took place with Spider-Man and Sony as they also passed on the MCU in favor for a Spider-Man cinematic universe. Until 2015, where it was announced that Sony had worked out a deal to share Spider-Man in Marvel movies that would benefit both companies. And with that, the dream was back on, with many people suggesting that the X-Men could arrive in Marvel's Phase 4 movies. In this video, we'll get down to it. As much as we'd like it, we'll talk about the main reasons why it's more unlikely than not. Welcome to the Justice League, and let's get to it. Alright guys, I've said this before in other videos regarding the X-Men coming to the MCU and why it can't happen, but those were personal opinions. So let's get into some more detailed reasoning and talk about some facts. Okay, here we go. Number four, mutants have no function in the MCU. Okay, so in my MCU breakdown videos, we talked about how each phase adds a key character, element, or plot piece that helps grow the overall story. And with that, we hit our first snag with the X-Men coming to the MCU. Now let's go back. The X-Men were created in 1963 by Stanley and Jack Kirby. And we all know that they were Marvel's take on discrimination during the civil rights movement. But getting more into the function of why they were made from a mutant's level, Stanley wanted a new group of super powered characters and he needed to be able to make a bunch of them without having to constantly come up with reasons why they have superpowers. So he went with the most simple explanation. They were born with them. This is also the tactic that Marvel took in the MCU regarding the Inhumans. Which brings me to my point. The Inhumans have taken the function of mutants in the MCU. They are the characters that were born with the superhuman gene in their DNA. They are the freaks that people are afraid of and hate in the MCU. Part of the Sokovia Accords are even tailored specifically for the Inhumans. So there's your Mutant Registration Act right there. Plainly put, outside of the X-Men themselves, the functions of mutants in the MCU has been filled already with the Inhumans. Number three they don't fit within the continuity. Now this is kind of an extension of number four as to why the X-Men wouldn't work in the MCU. So looking at the X-Men and the Brotherhood of Mutants specifically, and how they were kind of molded from the ideologies of Malcolm X and Martin Luther King, this brings us to how they wouldn't work in the MCU as it is. Now in the comics, mutants have always been there for decades, and they've been feared and hated. So they've had to deal with hate and discrimination a very long time. And this is what creates the duality between the X-Men and the Brotherhood of Mutants regarding Professor X and Magneto respectively. Professor X taking the we all shall overcome high road and Magneto adopting the by any means necessary mind state. The problem in the MCU is super powered people period have only been public knowledge for eight years. So without all that backstory and history, the movies will have to manufacture a narrative that deviates greatly from the comics to go in the place of that lost time. Pretty much breaking the characters and their motivations, which is something that Marvel almost always leaves untouched or only slightly tweaked to work in the movies. Since Professor X and Magneto are always seen as older people, and we know the mutant gene kicks in at puberty, the main questions would be, one, where have they been all this time? And two, without decades of mutant hardship to mold them as people, what would be the proper motivations for Professor X and Magneto to even create their opposing groups? Number two, 
The X-verse is still kicking. I'm aware of the trend online where all comic fans are just going to hate on everything Fox does with the X-Men until they give the rights back. I'm here to say right now, that is not going to work. Let's just look at the reception and the performance alone for Deadpool. That alone has given them the green light for another movie. Plus, there's still the final Wolverine movie, which pretty much guarantees they are rebranding the characters X-23. There's another Bryan Singer X-Men film in the works, as well as a New Mutants movie and even talks of X-Force, not to mention the show Legion, which is said to connect with the movies in the future. If all of this is taken into account, that's at least five more years of Fox's X-Verse, and unless all of these movies horribly bomb, which they won't, the X-Verse is still very much alive. Number one, the money. The main flaw in the just give it back to Marvel logic is there is no incentive on Fox's behalf to ever do that. We can talk about fan service and doing these characters justice till we all look like Mystique in the face. But at the end of the day, what drives these movies is money and if you look at the numbers you quickly realize why the x-men aren't going anywhere from fox anytime soon the x-men franchise has made fox over four billion dollars now let's put this in perspective the x-men franchise has made fox the same amount of money that disney bought all of marvel for the next argument you'll hear them say is well, Sony made a deal with Spider-Man, why can't Fox do the same with X-Men? Watch, they're gonna do it. Well, let's take a look. The main difference between Sony and Fox is the merchandising, meaning toys, lunch pails, keychains, etc. Marvel owns all of the merchandising rights to Spider-Man. So even though they won't make anything off of Spider-Man Homecoming, if the movie does well, they'll still make billions of dollars off of the Spider-Man brand, as he is the most recognizable selling superhero in the world. And that's with two subpar movies. Uh, now let's look at the X-Men. Fox takes a cut off of everything associated with them. That's why you got no specific mentions of Quicksilver and Civil War. Marvel also gets under 5% of X-Men movies with the lion's share going to Fox as well. Plus, Marvel has to share the revenue for any X-Men movie-related merchandise sold. This is why Marvel is pushing hard to bury their X-Men comics and toy lines. It doesn't serve them financially. Summing everything up, the reason Sony was willing to come to the table with Marvel was because they had no choice. They didn't have merchandise and rights to the character, and the Spider-Verse movies were on the decline, making the deal with Marvel more attractive. Fox, however, ain't in that position. They have all the right type of rights to the X-Men, not to mention the most important one, which is as long as they want to make X-Men films, they can keep making them. Basically taking everything that we know, everything that I've presented on paper, the X-Men going to the MCU or Fox giving the rights back is just really unlikely. Now believe me, I really want to be wrong on this one. I just don't think I am. Well anyways, what do you guys think about the X-Men coming to the MCU in Phase 4? Do you think it's not going to happen? Do you think it's more likely to happen? And if you do think it's going to happen, tell me how do you think they would implement them? Let's talk about it in the comment section. Okay guys, with that, I'm going to bring this video to a close. Thank you very much for watching, and if you like what you are seeing, please subscribe, please thumbs up, and please share these videos. One or all of those things are greatly appreciated. If you would like to check out some of my other MCU or X-Men movie related videos, you can check out my Phase 4 Let's Talk Avengers video, or you can check out my 5 things that will fix the Fox's X-Verse moving forward video. Thanks for watching, until next video, peace.